Welcome back to our last section of chapter two. I'm Dr. Dai, and in this video, we'll be looking at the biological macromolecules. Uh, the biological macromolecules are the essential building blocks of, of life that shape every living organism, uh, from the energy that fuels our bodies to the genetic information passed down through the generations. Uh, these macromolecules are the foundation of all life processes. All right, so here we go. Uh, if you think back to chapter one and the levels of organization, hopefully you remember that molecules are the building blocks of larger molecules and that larger molecules are in turn building blocks for things like organelles and other cellular structures. In living organisms, there are four major classes of biological macromolecules. We have the carbohydrates, lipids, also called fats, uh, proteins, and nucleic acids. Each of these has, is an important component of the cell and performs a wide array of functions. Um, combined, these molecules make up the majority of a cell's dry, like physical mass. Um, biological macromolecules are called organic, uh, meaning that they contain carbon and not to be confused with like, we're talking about like produce, like organic produce, that's something different entirely. Um, so organic in biology is gonna be referring to something being carbon-based. Um, now, an exception would be carbon dioxide. It contains carbon, but it's not considered organic. And we're not going to get into that. That's chemistry stuff. But just so you have kind of a frame of reference. Um, in addition, uh, organic molecules may contain hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur. And then there's kind of a range of other more minor elements that are also involved. Uh, but those are kind of our major, major atomic building pieces. All right. Uh, carbon is absolutely crucial for carbon-based life, which is the kind of life we're familiar with. Now, is it possible that there may be other types of life? Maybe um, people talk about silicone being a, an alternative for, for carbon-based life. I don't know, we haven't found any yet, but it's certainly possible. Um, carbon is really interesting though. It has some really unique properties that lend itself very well uh, to life. Uh, so it is the backbone of organic molecules uh, and the foundation of all living things. Um, so here are some of the key ways in which carbon is crucial for life. Um, it has versatility in its bonding. So carbon has this really remarkable ability to form stable covalent bonds with not just one, but four other atoms, including other carbons. Um, it can create a wide variety of complex structures. And this bonding versatility allows carbon atoms to link together in chains, into branch structures, into rings, um, forming the basis of countless organic compounds. Um, it's you know, building blocks of life. So carbon-based molecules are, are the building blocks. They are the major of every major biological macromolecule. Um, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Carbon is the base of all of those. Um, in fact, they're primarily made up of carbon in addition to the you know, nitrogen and oxygen and some other things. Um, these macromolecules serve a whole range of essential functions from su supplying uh, energy, uh, supporting the cellular structures, carrying genetic information, right, like DNA. Um, the vast majority of molecules found in living organisms are going to be carbon-based organic compounds. Um, so, like I said, things from simple sugars and the amino acids up to the double helix of the DNA that we'll look at later. Uh, these stable bonds that carbon can form, especially with hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, and phosphorus, just allow for so much range in, in the kind of structures that we can create. So this structural diversity, let's look at this a little bit more. So carbon's ability to form these really stable bonds with itself and other things uh, is, is just, I can't reiterate enough how, how important that is to just life existing at all. If it couldn't form these really nice stable bonds, we never would have gotten to a point where you could have cell membranes. Uh, very, very important. Um, Let's see, so this, this structural diversity also plays a really important role in proteins. We'll talk about proteins in a few minutes, uh, but they 
and you know, first we have this really complex range of structures that carbon itself can form, but amino acids are made uh, with carbon as its base, and they then as well can form these really unique and complex structures that determine their function. Uh, Carbon-based molecules are also really important for energy storage and transfer in the form of things like glucose, um, fatty acids, um, oh, energy molecules like ATP are at their base, are, are carbon. Uh, we also see this really important role in photosynthesis. Right? I mentioned carbon dioxide. It may not be considered an organic molecule, but it is the base of forming sugar. That's you know, primary product from photosynthesis, right? And we've got a whole chapter we'll spend on that later in the semester. Um, another thing that's maybe a little starts stepping more into biology too, uh, but is the carbon cycle and sustainability, which photosynthesis is a part of. Basically that carbon cycles uh, throughout our planet, uh, you know, carbon dioxide in the uh, atmosphere that comes from animal exhalations and a range of other processes, uh, brought into plants where it's then fixed, is the word we use, into sugars. Those sugars are then consumed by animals and bacteria and fungi and, and on and on it goes. Um, so life is heavily dependent on that process, right? Uh, you know, we tend to think of oxygen as this really important piece, but oxygen is actually just a, a byproduct of photosynthesis. It's not the, the main product of it. It's just kind of accident or consequence. Okay. So, um, you know, again, this, this unique properties, this fact that they can form four stable bonds with a nice range of other atoms um, is responsible for this huge diversity of different molecules that are involved in life.